Even into Britain, the darkness was creeping, threatening the people's heritage of old and trusted things. And first among those things was the people's right to choose their leaders. Elsewhere, a leader was choosing his people. Vienna heard the bombers roar, hung out the flags of black and red, and Austria was absorbed into the Reich. When he spoke, it was of Lebensraum, and wrongs now put right, but his was a hunger never appeased, and names took on a new and fateful meaning. Czechoslovakia. I can spell it now. In 1938, I'd hardly even heard of it. He had, though. He wanted the Sudeten lands and said he'd go to war to get them. That was the start of Wind Up Week. After three days of digging trenches, the bloke next to me says, Hitler. You know what he wants, don't you? I said, yes, the Sudeten lands. You know, he dropped his shovel right on my foot. If he wants the Sudetenlands, for goodness sake, let him have them. That was me. It caused a lot of argument in our family. I had two sons then. Stand up to him. That's what I said. There's only one way to deal with blokes like him. And I was right. I was in ARP, pitting gas masks on children. It seemed all wrong. I was in the news agency when the news came through. Believe me, we were only too glad to pass it on. People heard, well, what most of them wanted to hear, from the newspapers, the radio, and the screen. From the north, the south, and the west, four strong men converge on the German town of Munich to make it for one proud day the new center of the world. Germany and Italy, side by side. The past is forgotten, the world thinks only of the future, as the first plane brings the Prime Minister of France, Monsieur Daladier. With him is German Foreign Minister, Herr von Ribbentrop. Mr. Chamberlain. the bright straight road towards a new understanding in Europe. And so at Hitler's Munich headquarters, the agreement that has made the biggest headlines since the armistice. Let no man criticize the bargain that the statesmen of Britain and France have struck until he has attempted to add up the total price that might have had to be paid for any other settlement. A price in death and destruction. That price will not be paid. There will be peace. This morning, I had another talk with the German Chancellor, Herr Hitler. And here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. Some of you perhaps have already heard what it contains, but I would just like to read it to you. We regard the agreement signed last night and the Anglo-German naval agreement as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. The people cheered, for they sought not war. 
but outside the palisade of peaceful beings, the timeless wolves were on the prowl. Integrity, respect for pledges, and honor among men, for some, these belonged to an age that was past. Judgment had fled to brutish beasts, and men had lost their reason. The Rhineland, Austria, the Sudetenlands, the ancient city of Prague lay waiting, tensed. And then they came. The Germans strutted into Prague and made a mockery of Munich. Pretense was passed, the sham was ended, but hope still sprang eternal. While I hope that we shall always be ready to discuss in a reasonable spirit any grievances or any injustices which may be alleged to exist, it is to reason that we are prepared to listen and not the force. So said the politician, but the people cheered no more. For in the secret places of their hearts, they knew their hour was approaching. These were the people of busy city and suburban street, of smiling fields and tranquil immemorial villages. These were the people that were to meet with blood and fire, that were to fight, to die, on the burning beaches and the distant swamps, on the sun-baked desert and on their own street corner. These were the people and the voice they heard for the second time was the remorseless call of destiny. So it was, one Sunday morning in September. The seeds had long been sown, and all the land was waiting for the harvest. I am speaking to you in the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. Tis well. From this day forward we shall know that in ourselves our safety must be sought, that by our own right hands it must be wrought. <laughs> <laughs>